Cao Yue stands as a rugged mountain in Pechabori province, housing numerous limestone caves. The domain encompasses a Buddhist temple with an adjacent school that both share the mountain's name and features life-sized sculptures depicting monkey characters from the Rama Kien, the Thai version of the Ramayana. There are stairs with mythical serpent slithering on its handrails. Via this traditional Buddhist Naga staircase, starting from ground level, visitors can ascend to reach a flat area on the mountain that offers a choice of paths. To the left, a recently constructed modern staircase leads to the summit, boasting multiple platforms for panoramic views. On the opposite side, an older path with stairs guides explorers to two limestone grottos, which we delve into later. The new staircase, a recent addition since my previous visits, contrasts with the old route. Along the journey, several sala, open-sided gazebo-like pavilions, provide resting spots complete with wooden benches and roofs for shelter from sun or rain. Upon reaching the summit, a spacious platform treats visitors to breathtaking views from the northern flank of the mountain. From here, another staircase leads to the mountain's outer edge, providing a stunning panorama from the eastern side of the mountain, overlooking the neighborhood's rice paddies and local communities. With Pechabori located on the Thai Peninsula adjacent to Prachwap Kirikan province, whose name means a land of mountain chains, stunning mountain top views like this one certainly abound in the region. From here, we head back to the midpoint flat on the mountain, to embark on the next phase of our exploration.
From the balcony of this extension, one can enjoy a panoramic view of the area below and of the summit near the platform we explored earlier. In Thailand, mountains are often considered sacred. Being closer to the sky, they are believed to be closer to the divine, thus creating a conducive environment for meditation and spiritual practices with a sense of isolation and tranquility. Hence, Buddhist temples are often built on mountaintops. This seclusion allows monks and practitioners to focus on their spiritual journey without distractions. Besides this, the physical act of climbing a mountain in order to reach a temple can symbolize the spiritual journey toward enlightenment. The ascent is seen as a metaphor for overcoming challenges and progressing on the path to spiritual awakening. Mountaintops and their spiritual connection to Buddhism are therefore a combination of the pursuit of serenity and the desire to be closer to nature which besides breathtaking views, foster a connection with the natural environment. This connection is integral to Buddhist teachings that emphasize mindfulness and interconnectedness with all living beings. Having returned to the midpoint flat on the mountain, we now embark on the next phase of our exploration and follow an aged concrete path and staircase as we set out to uncover two grottos. The first cave, Tham Sawan, which translates to Heavenly Cave, has an almost concealed entrance that leads to a steep metal staircase, followed by passages that demand bending and squeezing through challenging corridors. Not knowing what exactly lies next adds to our overall excitement. Once inside, the cave unfolds into a labyrinth of corridors with vast halls steep staircases and ladders and intricate passageways that connect the various caverns. The first subterranean hall we encounter has a high ceiling with an opening through which we can see the sky and some trees. We see some white stalactites and a small stalactite curtain. As we descend deeper into the cave, we come across a cavernous chamber that opens up into an even larger subterranean hall. Here, we stumble upon a makeshift altar with several Buddha images. In the rear, we observe a steep and tall ladder, but initially, we proceed deeper into the main hall to continue our exploration. On one side, a sizable opening in the ceiling lets in daylight from outside, 
while on the other side, there's a small niche-like cavern illuminated by artificial light. To the right of that, a staircase ascends to another level. At the base of this staircase is a concrete statue of a golden turtle. In many Asian cultures, it is a symbol of longevity, endurance, and a long life. Its ability to live for a long time and its slow, deliberate, and calm movements are seen as qualities associated with wisdom and patience. The strong and protective shell of the turtle is a symbol of resilience and the ability to withstand adversity. At the top of the stairway, we found a designated space with small towers of rocks and pebbles stacked on top of each other. These human-made piles of stones are known as cairns and are often found in natural landscapes throughout Thailand, and though some claim they represent miniature stupas, no one really seems to know their exact significance. From here, we proceed to our next challenge, ascending the steep path and climbing the tall ladder that had caught our attention on the way in. We ascend toward the light and enter an arena-like space that is nearly open air. From the top of the ladder, gazing into the abyss below, we have an aerial perspective of the vast subterranean chamber we just explored. We come across some more cans, and later on Donwell makes an effort to explain what he thinks their meaning is. We notice another opening with yet another ladder, descending into the dark depths. It proves to be a dead end, the ultimate cavern, and its darkness conceals a group of bats that seek refuge here during the daytime. Lacking a good torch and with limited visibility, we opt to retrace our steps and ascend back into the open area. According to Dom, the cairns, or human-made stacks of stones, are used as symbolic trail markers erected by hikers as a way of leaving a trace of their presence. Roots from the trees above have extended all the way down, firmly attaching themselves to the rocky sides of this open area. During our descent, Dom spots the lifeless body of a large spider, likely a cave huntsman. This particular species, belonging to the genus Heteropoda, is a free-roaming huntsman spider and is related to the giant huntsman spider, a colossal, cave-dwelling arachnid found in Laos. 
With an impressive 30 cm leg span, the giant huntsman spider holds the title of the world's largest spider in terms of leg span. Walking past columns of giant stalactites and stalagmites, we navigate our way back to the entrance. We ascend further along the concrete path towards the second cave, Thampra Si An, which is named after a giant crown Buddha statue that was erected in the cave by Wat Khao Yoi, the temple at the foot of the mountain. After observing the Crown Buddha statue from above, we proceed to descend deeper into the cave. Soon, we arrive at a chamber that also has a section with cans. Here, we encountered a small gecko with a reddish-brown body and a banded tail with black and white rings. Though less demanding, this cave too features tunnels and passageways leading to hidden corners and openings, offering glimpses of the mountain's outer flanks. Outside, we observe the sun setting transforming the light into a warm orange hue and casting increasingly elongated shadows on the mountain side. We decide to hurry back inside and visit the remainder of the cave before it gets completely dark.
Squeezing our way through a narrow crevice-like pathway, we reach another rock hollow, surrounded by rocks yet open to the sky. Here too, tree roots have extended all the way down to the bottom, creating a curtain of wood. A crevice in the corner at the opposite end of the cliff, with an ascending path, compels us to venture even further along this track. However, we soon find ourselves stuck at a ridge of the mountain and need to backtrack along the trail we just traversed. We took a last look in the main hall with the crowned Buddha statue and then determined it was time to begin our descent back to the foot of the mountain. A group of friendly macaques that call the mountain home has begun retreating for the night. As we descend, they ascend, seeking safety in the higher reaches during the darkness. These long-tailed macaques, also referred to as crab-eating macaques, are monkeys of the genus Macaca iris. They have a long tail, with a length that is up to 10 centimeters longer than the size of their head and body combined, measuring somewhere between 40 to 65 centimeters. Their coat is brown with some gray, and the fur on their heads is short and sticks upward, reminiscent of a tuft. 
they are social animals that live in large groups and can be found all over Thailand. They feed on plants, insects, and crabs. Upon our descent, we find that the Buddhist cave at the bottom has already closed, and the majority of the monkeys, which are typically ever-present during the day, have already departed. Before heading back, we briefly explore the temple's fish feeding pond, and the two gardens featuring additional statues of Rama Kien monkeys situated on the opposite side of the road. As we conclude our visit, the tranquility of the temple caves and the majesty of the summit linger in our memories. We take a final look at this remarkable mountain from below, already planning to one day come back for even more adventures. <laughs>